There are three alignments for the triad wedge, vertical, horizontal, and angle. The vertical alignment refers to the up and down position of the wedge in relation to the pressure rollers. The horizontal alignment refers to the forward or backwards movement between the wedge tip and pressure rollers. And the angle alignment refers to the wedge tip position with respect to being parallel with the pressure rollers. It is important to note that the horizontal and angle alignments for the triad will affect each other. The forward-backward movement of the wedge creates an angle in the wedge tip which must be corrected. Therefore, small increments of adjustment are made in both the forward-backward and angle movement to accomplish an overall change. For the vertical alignment, take a small piece of material and fold this in half placing it between the pressure rollers. Close the rollers with the fold of material just past the center. Engage the wedge lever arm in so the wedge moves into the welding position. From both sides, look at the wedge tip in relation to the fold of material. Proper alignment should be the wedge tip touching the fold. If adjustment up or down is needed, place the large hex wrench in the socket screw and turn one direction or the other, watching from the side for the correct alignment. Move the wedge lever arm slightly to make sure this position is consistent. For the angle alignment, loosen the locking nut around the adjustment screw. Use the hex wrench to turn the adjustment screw one direction or the other and observe the movement of the wedge. Correct the angle so that the wedge tip is parallel to the pressure rollers. To view this, adjust your field of vision from above to just see the wedge tip between the pressure rollers using the bottom edge of the top roller as your parallel reference. Make a comparison of the wedge tip to the roller and correct if necessary so that they are parallel. For the horizontal alignment, first loosen the locking nut from the adjustment screw. When moving the wedge backwards or in towards the pressure rollers, it is best to release the pressure of the gas spring against the wedge pivot arm. Remove the locking collar around the gas spring and then push up to remove the end socket from the ball connection. Using the hex wrench, turn the adjustment screw counterclockwise one or two revolutions and retighten the locking nut. It is at your discretion how many revolutions to make. It is usual to move backwards more than anticipated because it is best to fine tune the adjustment by moving in the forward direction. Slightly loosen the adjustment screw and slide the lower portion of the wedge adjustment hub until it hits the adjustment screw. Retighten the adjustment locking screw to hold this position. Replace the gas spring and locking pin. At this point, a correction to the angle alignment of the wedge must be done. When moving the wedge forward or away from the pressure rollers, the gas spring does not have to be removed. Loosen the locking nut from the adjustment screw. Using the hex wrench, slightly loosen the adjustment locking screw. With the hex wrench, rotate the adjustment screw clockwise. As the adjustment screw rotates, it will push against the adjustment locking screw and the force of the gas spring. Rotate in half turn increments or even quarter turn increments. After each turn, retighten the adjustment locking screw and correct the angle alignment. Remember that when the angle adjustment is made, the total movement of the wedge will be greater than your forward or backwards change. Each quarter turn rotation clockwise and the angle correction will move the wedge approximately 1 64th of an inch forwards or away from the pressure rollers. When completed, 
retighten the locking nut on the adjustment screw. To test the adjustments made, turn the triad power on with no heat to the wedge. Rotate the drive speed to 100%. Close the pressure rollers and engage the wedge into the welding position. With the rollers moving, the wedge should just touch the rollers. If the wedge is pulled into and separates the rollers, further forward and or angle adjustments will be needed. And likewise, if the wedge does not just make contact with the rollers and space can be seen between the wedge surface and the surface of the rollers, backward and or angle adjustment will need to be made. Consideration should be made for the thickness of the material to be welded. Thicker material may need some gap of the wedge to the rollers so that it flows smoothly during the welding process.